be in 1 John 3 today, but let's start with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for this morning, Lord. I thank you for the sounds of nature, Lord, of the birds singing, Father, reminding us of just how creation worships you, Lord. May our lives bring worship to you, Lord, in everything that we do, everything that we say, Lord. May we honor you. Teach us from your word. Holy Spirit, teach us, guide us, instruct us in the ways of righteousness, that we may be pleasing to our Heavenly Father, honor our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So again, we are going to be in 1 John 3. But first, I want to read a little quote from Corey Timboon um, about loving your enemies. She says this, even if this was her approaching one of the guards that had, my phone's still acting up here, one of the guards that had tortured and been there at the camp where she was, he knew her and then she recognized him and the feelings that she had. And this is what came out of that moment. It says, even as the angry, vengeful thoughts boiled through me, I saw the sin of them. Jesus Christ had died for this man. Was I going to ask for more? Lord Jesus, I prayed, forgive me and help me to forgive him. Jesus, I cannot forgive him. Give me your forgiveness. And so I discovered that it is not on our own forgiveness anymore than on our own goodness that the world's healing hinges, but on His. When He tells us to love our enemy, He gives along with that the command, the love itself. You know, if the Lord asks you to do something, He's going to give you everything you need to accomplish what he's asked you to do. In the natural, we can't forgive some people for things that have been done. But through Christ, through the love of Jesus flowing through us, we can. Things that in the natural are impossible, through our Lord, become possible. You see, he came to give us life and to give us life more abundantly. He's not going to ask us to live a holy life and not give us what we need to live that holy life. But it's up to us. How much do we really believe? If you listened to the message that Matthew did on Sunday, uh, he talked about the wheelbarrow. You'll have to go back and listen to this past Sunday's message. It was good. Go back and listen. I mean, do we really believe? In 1 John 3, it says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called the children of God. Therefore the world does not know us, because it did not know Him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when He is revealed, and the Lord comes back, we shall be like Him. For we shall see him as he is. We will see him in all his glory. And to know that he has made us part of his family. What an awesome thing. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. If you truly believe that Jesus is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings, if you've truly made him Lord of your life, we should want to please Him. We should want to be like Him in order to be able to have the benefits and glory that He has prepared for us. He's not asking us to do something we cannot do because He's provided a way for us to do everything He's asked us to do. When He told Moses to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt, he gave Moses all the abilities that he needed. When he needed wisdom because he was starting to do too many things on his own, he had his father-in-law say, you need to choose 70 men to help you. God will always 
give you what you need if you seek him. He's not going to put on you more than you can handle. He will provide a way for you to do the things that he's called you to do. And if it's forgiving somebody, he's going to put that love in you that you need to forgive. I'm going to jump to verse 16. It says, By this we know love, because he laid down his life for us, and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whosoever has this world's goods and see his brother in need, and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? You know, we often think of just material things in that verse. But there's people that have really heavy spiritual needs. And we have the solution with that. And that is through Jesus Christ. So what we have, just like Peter and John with the, the, the lame man, the, you know, we don't have the money, but what we have we do give to you. Rise up and walk. We have the living power of God within us that can bring hope, that can bring healing. It can do things that things in this world cannot. It is supernatural because we have a supernatural God and His Spirit. When you've asked Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, and you've truly made Him Lord of your life, the Spirit of God is going to flow through you to bless, to bless others. Whether it be with material things, if you have the finances and you can help a brother and sister in Christ, missions, I mean right now our brothers and sisters in Christ in the Ukraine are, are going through a tough time. In Haiti, they're still going through tough times. I mean, there's no homes. There's there's so much missing. It only takes like $1,500 to rebuild a little house in Haiti. Yeah, there is so much that can be done. If you have the, the finances, you can bless that way. But don't forget the spiritual side because that's the greatest thing that people need is that relationship with their God. The God that created them wants us. He gave his son to die for us so that we can be made righteous. And he rose again to show us that he has authority over everything. You carry a treasure within you that is beyond anything this world has to give. It goes on and says, My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And by this we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our hearts and knows all things. If you've got bad things going on inside of you, if you've got evil thoughts in your heart, don't think that you can hide those from God, because he can see those things. He is greater than our own self. He knows all things. It says, Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God. And whatever we ask, we receive of Him. And this is why. Because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. You see, what we ask for is going to change when you ask to please God. When you're asking for things that you want so that you can honor God, those are the things He's going to respond and give us. He's not going to give you things that are going to harm you and pull you away from Him. He's going to give you those things that will draw you close to Him. And this is His commandment, that we should believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as He gave us commandment. Now He who keeps His commandments abides in Him. Again, that is to, to believe in the name of Jesus Christ, to love one another. It says, and he, excuse me, and by, excuse me, he, he abides in us by the Spirit whom we have, and he, let me read 24 again, I'm sorry. Now he who keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in him. And by this we know that he abides in us by the Spirit whom he has given us. You've got the Spirit of God working in you. If you feel conviction at times, 
when you're doing something or you've got a thought that's wrong, that's the Spirit of God correcting you. Be thankful. Don't try to push it away. Listen to that correction. Submit to that correction. Let God work in your life. He is working in you and me every day to make us more and more like Jesus. So keep a praise song in your heart. Remember again, Philippians 4, 8. Think on good things. Think on the blessings of the Lord. Think on all the wonderful things. Hide God's word in your heart that you might not sin against him. And keep that praise song in your heart. So I will see you tomorrow morning, 7 o'clock a.m. And if not, remember you can always tune in later on in the day. Blessings to all of you.